Okay, another edition of the Penn State Blitz. I'd say, Greg, we're about halfway through Penn State's spring practice sessions. Right. The blue-white game's going to be here quickly. Mm -hmm. I am predicting a shutout again this year. I think blue, the blue will win okay. because James Franklin always stacks the deck. That's right. But that's a, that is a topic for another blitz. Let's talk about what's happened in spring. Let's talk about a couple of players who could play big roles, I think, for Penn State in the fall. And let's start with a redshirt freshman, offensive tackle, Rasheed Walker. Uh, I think he's learning the hard way at the left tackle position. They, they've been, I've seen earlier in, in camp they've kind of paired him against Etor Gross Matos. doesn't always go so well when you're right. dealing with a player that could be a potential first-round pick maybe down the line. But what, do you, what, what are you hearing about Rasheed? I mean, I think it's trial by fire at this yeah. point. They clearly want – I think they're training him and Will Fries at left and right tackle. They probably move him back and forth. But it almost looks to me, Bob, like they want Walker to be their left tackle, the future. Now, will mm -hmm. that be the case? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, the couple practices we've been to, there's times when it looks like he can be that guy. There's times that it looks like he's a redshirt freshman. I mean, I think the video Sean Spencer put out of Etor blowing by him was sort of unfair. A little maybe mean. not a maybe not a complete. A little mean, Coach Chaos. I thought. Yeah, maybe not a complete representation of his spring to date. But um, you know, when you're a redshirt freshman yeah. trying to play left tackle and you're going against top Big Ten talent. It, there's a reason a lot of guys aren't able to make that transition quickly, so he has a bit of ways to go. Yeah, and last year, Bates and Fries both flip-flopped at the tackle right. positions. I will say this, having been on the beat for a while, this kind of reminds me of Penn State had a very talented offensive tackle named Levi Brown, mm -hmm. who uh, this was, I think this would have been 2002 or 2003, and they played him early. He took, he took his, his, his lumps. Uh, but that's, that's what happens when you play uh, that position at a young age. He ended up being a first-round pick. I'm not saying Rasheed Walker is like that, but similar positions, sim similar times in their careers. Let's just see how Rasheed does. He definitely needs some room to kind of get some experience, and let's see what he looks like maybe in August. Another young player, though, I think we need to talk about is a true freshman. You know, there's so many good freshmen uh, in this class, but a guy, that, a guy that might be under the radar that could really help Penn State in the fall is corner Keaton Ellis yeah. from State College. Yeah, he had an interception in practice the other day. Obviously, is getting a lot of reps early on. You know, he's not just coming out there at the end of practice and catching balls on the jugs machine or anything like that. I mean, he's getting actual live practice reps, which isn't a surprise in right. the spring, but it's also notable because they have a lot of good corners. I mean, they return. I know Donovan Johnson, you know, I'm not sure what his status is right now. He's sort of not practicing all that much, but... John Reed, three Castro Field. You know they have right. some really, uh, some really talented guys in that room, and even some other younger guys. So for Ellis, and then James Franklin mentioned the other freshman, Marquise Wilson as well. Right, is a guy that's having a good spring so far and adjusting quickly. So I, I think that they like what those guys can do, and I expect to see them play special teams, even if they don't maybe play as much on defense as they could. Yeah, it kind of brings to mind uh, James Franklin's first year with Grant Haley mm -hmm. and Christian Campbell. They were both uh, fast-tracked to play. They really liked them. Uh, the talent base is deeper now, but clearly if Keaton Ellis is, is drawing maybe some praise and doing some good things in practice on this roster, I think it really bodes well for his future. And I, really, you can never have enough good corners the way the game's played now right. against spread offenses. And I do think that that's a position that Penn State under James Franklin and Brent Pryor, they've always tried to play those guys, you know, early right away because it'll pay dividends uh, down the line. We got to talk about quarterbacks, right? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a, a pen live video if we didn't talk about, especially Tommy Stevens, right? Who is right over I your think, shoulder? I think the most talked about player in Penn State history that really hasn't become a starter yet, right? I would say he is. Yeah. If not, it's close. I don't know who else would be second. But Tommy is being limited in practice. James Franklin, at the very start of spring, kind of hinted that maybe he wasn't quite uh, at the progression level from rehab that maybe they thought at when they announced his, his undisclosed or surgery for an undisclosed injury. Uh, it it kind of feels like maybe they're being very careful with him. Uh, are you surprised by this, that maybe he hasn't done – a lot of work, or do you think this was, this was kind of the plan all along? No, I mean, I have to think it was designed. I still go back to the opening spring news conference James Franklin had when he made note of the fact yep. that an outside doctor performed the surgery yeah. and that they're dealing with that. For a program that releases next to nothing on the medical front, to release that I thought yeah. was sort of interesting. And 
clearly there's a lot of uh, hands in the kitchen on this one when it comes to clearing him to be able to go back to play. So it's chefs in the kitchen. Chefs right? in the kitchen. Yes. Get it um, straight. Yes, that's right. So uh, d at this point, it's Sean Clifford and Will Levis' show for the most part. Yeah. I think Steven is getting some limited reps, but not much. And how that will impact things come the you know come the quarterback race in the summer camp, we'll have to wait and see. But interesting for now, I would not expect to see him in the blue light game. Yeah, and like the the uh, the silver lining is, I think Sean Clifford is a guy that's is going to benefit from this experience. If not this year, he is a guy that I think Penn State has targeted right. to play a very significant role at the quarterback position. If not this year, then definitely in 2020, and they get a chance maybe to give. Will Levis some some reps that maybe had Tommy been around, he wouldn't receive. So I think there is a silver lining. Hopefully Tommy can get on the field, but you know the last ever since the end of the 2017 season, he's just really struggled to get playing time uh, due to injury. It was I think it was it was clearly it was lower lower leg right. last year a couple of occasions. So hopefully he'll bounce back. But so far we just haven't heard a lot about Tommy. Maybe that'll change at the next practice availability. But we'll see. You just never know with James Franklin. You never know. That's right. And I think right now, Greg, it's time for maybe a mailbag question or Let's two. Let's get to it, Bob. The first one, NFL Combine is in the books. Pro Day is in the books. Yeah. So we're left with some individual workouts and some draft party plans. You had a good time at State College last week, I heard. Yeah, Pro Day. I have day, a spy practice. up in State College that said you were up there for practice uh, and Pro, pro day. day. They were back to back. Little. You and Joe Hermit didn't get cheated. That's the word I got on the street. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's quite okay. So, mailbag question one. Yeah. Penn State, first round. Will they go two for two after Saquon Barkley went in the first round of your draft? Yeah. I mean, I think, the, I think the player that's definitely been, you know, much like last year with Deshaun Hamilton uh, and Troy Apke, uh, I think Miles Sanders has clearly been the, the, the biggest riser of the Penn State draft prospects. Right. Um, as we, as we tape this, I, I read a uh, mock draft by Peter Schrager uh, of the NFL Network, NFL.com. He now has uh, Miles sneaking into the first round to the Rams, who are dealing with the Todd Gurley uh, injury issue. And I think, I don't think that that is that far-fetched. I would also say, Greg, that another team to watch for with Miles is the Eagles, mm -hmm. because they need a running back, and a lot of people are, are linking, him, linking them to the Alabama running back. I think it's Josh Jacobs, I yep. believe. Uh, I know that they met with Miles, I think, out at the Combine. I, I think that Miles now, I, I was thinking top 100. I think we, I was clearly wrong. I think he's a top 50 player, and d depending on how they value him and what he's shown as a receiver, because Penn State really didn't use him as a receiver, the fact that he can catch the ball, uh, he's close to a complete back. I mean, I would, Peter Schrager just doesn't throw names, you know, out like that unless he's hearing something. So. It could be Miles Sanders as the first Penn State player taken in the draft. Who would go after him? Mailbag question number two. Who would be uh, next on your board? Miles. It's Miles and or Amani. They're one and one eighth in okay. my book. Um, I think Connor McGovern's also right there in the mix, and then Sharif Miller. Those are those are those would be my Penn State final four. Okay. If you will see what I did. Nice. For for the draft in some particular order. I also know that Penn I think a lot of teams like Connor McGovern, and I think Sharif Miller. You know, I think he's helped himself this offseason, and pass rushers are hard to, to, uh, to find. I think his best football is ahead of him. All right, last one. We'll stay with the Final Four theme. Your biggest surprise or upset pick for the Sweet 16 round of the NCAA tournament Ooh, is what? I don't know. I, I still cannot believe Duke Yeah. pulled that little out. Little finger roll here, little uh, better yeah. defense there, you know. Yeah, the, the, team I, the team I would watch, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but I really like, I, I'm looking forward to see the Florida State Gonzaga game, mm -hmm. and as athletic as Florida State is, I think they'll give they could give Gonzaga all they want. And uh, I said at the start, even though no one really heard me say it, I said it to myself: uh, Virginia's going to win it all. I yeah. think I think they survived that first round scare, and it was a scare. But that's a good team, and I think that now they can relax and start to play. I think they're as good as any team in the country. So Virginia wins it, and I'll be watching Florida State Gonzaga. I think you will be too. All right. What Let's about you? What's I they don't. Don't they don't. you try and get out of this video without making a pick? No, I think uh, there are a lot of people down on Duke at this point, and I think they beat Virginia Tech by at least fifteen. Chalk better. I knew it. All right, that's it for this edition <laughs> of the Penn State Blitz. We'll have more uh, college basketball handicapping as we get closer to the championship game.